A, you run it once. This is Sauce123. Today I'm back and we're going to be making a 1020, hopefully, anties video. I'm cycling through these tables because I don't know. I'm trying to get, you know, four tables up and, you know, we'll see how well that works. You know, I, I position myself on all of the, um, ooh, I hit two pair. That's a good hand. Position myself on all of the empty tables at 1020. There's like, there's like nine tables in the lobby and I'm on the empty one. So eventually I think someone will have to play with me and then we'll get four tables. So that's my plan. You know, you have to bear with me. Other than that, you know, some of these guys are playing. So we got two tables and we got this table. This might not break. Um, oh yeah, so let's talk about this hand. So we got, you know, the ace down. We can min raise on the button. You got ace five three seven. You know, it's a, it's a pretty pretty good turn. The thing is, if I check, obviously I'm I'm probably best now. But if I check raise, you know, like over half the deck is going to be a little bit ugly for me. Only a seven and a three is going to be super value bettable. So the idea here is we just call and we call down on pretty much any river card that doesn't make our hand worse. This nine of spades is one that we're going to call down unless he makes a massive overbet. I think this is a deep table, so no, it's breaking. They're always breaking. The, the lobbies are a freaking jungle, you know? Like, the waiting lists are like 25 deep. I think everyone has a script. You guys probably know more about this than me, but I, I don't even know how to play poker anymore. I just, you know, I play. I play when people let me play, and I, I don't know this whole script game. And people want the fastest script. They want the, the best. Let's call 5-3 here. 5-3. I mean, I got really good. So 3 307. You gotta wonder, is he value betting ace king and ace queen here? I don't know, but he can definitely be bluffing with like jack ten of diamonds. My hand's pretty strong. He might value bet worse. He's definitely value betting five three probably. I'm just gonna call and hope. Nope. No dice. This might break, it looks like. And in an anti-game, I think it's okay to mix in a few limps uh, on the button. Sometimes. Just gonna three bet here with the eight four suited. I have position, and uh, I like to apply some pressure in the situation sometimes against a wide opening range. Um, I really like it when they flat call because then I can sort of use my strong range to my advantage. Obviously, we can't let call ten deuce off. It's not gonna work. And uh, you know, I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna make a. I actually like to bet small on this flop because. I usually like to widen my range to include ace king, and um, ace king can actually value bet for um, a sizing like this. Not value bet per se, but protection bet, sort of range bet. I don't know, merge, whatever you want to call it. But it's uh, a good tactical play, I think, to bet ace king here sometimes at least. Obviously, this is an excellent barrel spot for me. Um, I'm going to barrel and I'm going to shove the river fairly often. Uh, I don't think he has king-queen too much, which is kind of the trouble hand. So I'm going to increase the bet size a little bit here. Um, and win the pot a lot. So this ace-jack suited, sort of a funny card. I think betting and checking are both okay. Uh, I'm just going to bet this time. Not going to get too far into it. Uh, five deuce off, we're going to fold. I'm going to stop talking about folding. The pre-flop stuff I'm not going to talk about unless it's like really non-standard or I think it's close. So if I don't say anything, you guys can just assume that it's standard for me. And if you think that that's bad or you want to talk about what, something I think is standard, then we can talk about it. But um, otherwise, probably not. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and you know, just make a little raise here again. Call with the queen jack. And this ace jack uh, here is an okay barrel, I think, but you know, read this, I'm just gonna check fold because he might show down jack 10 and not bluff with it. And if he does that, uh, checking is pretty good, my ace jack here. Uh, I'm gonna flat on the bottom. Raise getting it in is, I think, a little bit thin. He's just gonna have a lot of hands like pocket kings. Uh, so I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna call it. And hopefully my connection will cooperate. And again, we're going to try to show down here. I'm going to lose to queen 10 type stuff a lot, but uh, occasionally I think I'll win. And like ideally, he'll show down something like 8 of diamonds, 8x, and I'll just win. Uh, that may or may not happen. Also 6x. So let's see if this is a good table. Yeah, they're not actually playing. So queen 9 suited makes a lot of sense. Okay, so down here we've got three queens and a jack. 
Obviously, that's very good. Blocking the jack. This is actually one of these hands that I prefer to check back sometimes against some players. Uh, I don't really know a lot about human. So it's close, but um, you know, I, I think both plays are fine here. I'm actually going to bet small. The idea is that I can be betting a lot of different hands for value protection here, and he can never fold an overpair, and he can't fold the jack against this bet size, and um, sort of uh, protection value sort of, um, I'm going to say tactical bet or something. Oh my god, I'm being removed by the tape. By the servers. Okay. So I'm just sort of scanning. So I'm on all these waiting lists in Ted 20. So the idea, we're going to try to get four tables up eventually and play a real poker session. I'll even, I might even play 2550 because I don't play with these guys too. And they're not going to play with me though. So it's kind of a waste of our time. So we'll see eventually. Eventually, hopefully, we'll get up uh, enough tables. But for now, we're going to have to settle ourselves with two tables. I'm going to stick to the 1020 and 1020 games for the most part because I think there's enough tables running that we can we can make it happen. So the idea of this video is that I've been doing a lot of theory videos recently, and I'm going to sort of uh, make a looser video where I'm just playing poker and sort of talking about what I'm thinking, and I'm going to try to get on you know four tables of 1020. Uh, so that I can accumulate some reads against these uh, against these guys, uh, and hopefully this will end up being you know a four part video series something like that. Um, maybe we'll end up playing five hundred hands, six hundred hands, and we'll be able to sort of you know build a profile on these guys and sort of talk about some adjustments. Because something that I don't talk about much in my videos, and I know it's something that Phil talks about a lot. This is a little bet. See this bet? It's thirty seven dollars into one hundred eighty nine. The idea of this bet is that the five is a pretty good card for my range. Um, it's not a good card for a semi-bluffing range. And um, I just want to charge him a little bit if he has a hand like, say, 8-7 or something. I don't want to give him the complete free card. So I think that's a fine play. Then on this river here, uh, we have to value bet. Obviously, we're going to have a lot of ace-x hands that don't really want to value bet in the queen. Um, but I think we can go ahead and make a bet here. Uh, and get value from basically ace x. Uh, let's see what we're gonna see what he has. He had ace jack, so I mean, obviously, uh, I'm actually surprised he didn't raise the turn. But that's pretty soon. Uh, King ten suited is a very easy call uh, against the three bet, even out of position. And we're gonna check call the flop. Ace four four is a board where I just won't have a four barely ever, and I'll be four betting my strong aces most of the time. So my range is pretty, I mean, it's, unless I have pocket fours or something, or ace four suited maybe once in a blue moon. But the huge majority of my range is either a bluff catcher, a flush draw, or air. Uh, and so check raising doesn't do anything. It just protects my hand, but I don't need to protect my hand because it's an ace high board. So check raising is just a bad play. So I call. Uh, with the king high flush draw, I block ace king, and I also have, I dominate other flush draws. So I'm actually going to check call the turn two, pretty much no matter what he bets. And work from there, uh, and then on this on this run out here, I'm just going to check it down and lose a lot. Over here on the Ace Five Deuce against the check, uh, this is a spot that is fairly read dependent for me. You know, it's I don't really want to fold my hand ever because my hand's pretty good. At the same time, and I it's also sort of a little bit tempting to three barrel because. Um, I block ace king and ace queen, and I block king x of hearts. But I'm going to go ahead and show my hand down as a default play. Although I think I just lose to pocket eights here a lot against average opponents and chop with king queen and maybe beat king jack. I feel like I'm going to get bluffed by anything weaker than, than jack 10 at some point in the hand. So I don't feel good about this spot. Let's find out. So he has two jacks. And the thing is, is like, you know, if I start barreling off, I always win against that hand, and I'm going to just turn enough equity that I can push him off, you know, two black jacks or two non, non heart jacks pretty much every time. So, you know, I think being aggressive in that spot is okay. But considering, you know, I'm sauce and I bluff a lot and I'm tough to play against, it's one of these things where, like, I think I should 
play it a little standard, a little tight first. I want to see what he shows down. I want to see how he's playing his range. I want to look at his timing, and then maybe I'll start to play back a little more later. That's kind of my game plan. Um, I don't really know any of these regulars, by the way. I know Human, but I played with Human, you know, two plus years ago when he was playing a lot higher. He's a pretty big nit, not gonna lie. Uh, so we can expect nittiness from him. I'm gonna sit this table. You guys can't see this, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to get action. I'm trying so hard to get action. So this king jack off for me is usually a call. Usually it's a call. I could three bet too, but I think it's just a little too loose. A6 suit is a very easy raise against the limp. If you don't raise this, you're making a mistake. Note to self. I'll be 3xing right here because that's what my table ninja is set on right now. And I know how to play the different styles. And I know how to play 3x. I know how to play 2.5. I know how to play 2x. And I don't think it matters that much. So I hit this ace down here on row trout 3. And I'm sitting here, and it's like, what am I really bluffing with in this river? I hit everything. So maybe I'm bluffing with 3x, but I don't think I need to value bet king jack in order to balance my 3x bluffs. That seems like too loose of a play. You know, maybe I have queen jack of spades that I'm bluffing with, but I'm just going to have so many value bets to balance here that I don't think I need to go down as far as king jack off to value bet. That being said, maybe I should bet like a third pot, fifth pot. That might be okay. But I think check call is just the, the standard. That's the standard here. Jack nine, no good. So the lesson is that, the lesson, the, the takeaway, the point is that when almost all of your flop calling range is beating a lot of his range, um, there's no reason to value bet super thin. It's actually better to protect, to protect your checking range. Pocket queens, that's a hand we're gonna go all in with. Maybe we'll get 4-bet. If we get cold 4-bet, it's actually a little bit close. We get flatted. Oh, this will be fun. And looks like we may get a chance to play poker. King-10 offsuit, I like to start out by calling. I'll sometimes 3-bet, depending on my reads. Oh, the Skype chat. They had a Skype chat, and they decided, you know, we're going to play with Sauce today. It's time. We know he's making a video. We want to be, we want that airtime. This is a televised table right here. All right, so king nine five deuce four. Um, so here's the thing. I've got some bluffs here. Uh, he doesn't really improve very much on this four, so I think this is just a, a spot where I want to get quite a bit of value. Um, even overbetting is almost sort of tempting. So this two queens hand is kind of kind of funny too. Uh, East five four. I'm just gonna check. The reason is like the lose Roja doesn't have anything here unless he misclicked pre. She might have. If he's betting, I don't know why he's betting. He's just so this guy called me with Ace Deuce, so that's you know not a good play. Um, unless he thinks that I'm over bluffing that card, and why should he think that? He should uh, tens. I think is strong enough to to raise against you know the twenty some odd percent that he's opening in the hijack in all likelihood. Um, it's close. It's one of the weaker hands that I'd raise. I would, actually, I wouldn't raise nines. So. The weakest pair. So when it goes, you know, bet call here, my queens are not going to be good often enough to continue. Um, I'm quite surprised that Luz Roja bet this flop, like I was saying before, because I don't think he has much, because most of his range, I mean, yeah, maybe he just has a hand like ace queen suited. That's sort of a hand that makes sense. Um, that's not a sit, I usually play four better fold in this spot, because our, our pre flop investment was only one big blind. And um, I think splitting our range when we only have one big blind invested by calling another like 13, 14 bigs is just not. Not going to be worth it. Uh, this is very standard check here on Jack for, well, very standard. It's a spot that I usually check. And the reason is because if I narrow his range down to flush draws and mostly pairs that have outs against me and some floats, um, I'm going to end up check folding the turn in a big pot uh, very often. So I, what I really am trying to do with this play is show down against his checking back range. When he bets against me on the flop, I'm just doing terrible. That's just something I'll have to accept and deal with. Um, 
that being said, you know, if he's protection betting, so the other interesting thing about this board is that when you have the four of spades and the three of spades, um, he doesn't hit that many hands that can protection bet that, that are unpaired. So like he's not going to have ace four suited that often or, you know, five four suited. He's going to be fully that pre-flop. So when it goes check, check, my hand is pretty good, but I actually think that this is a hand that has so many bad rivers on the 10 that it's something that I want to go ahead and check call with. So he snapped check back the turn and we hit the 10 of diamonds. I don't think that this is a good spot um, to go for a check raise because we block all the 10s and he didn't bet the turn. So I don't think he's thin value betting the river very much. So I think it's a spot that we just go for a you know fairly standard bet and call a raise and hope that he occasionally bluff raises. I don't really think he's doing that. Maybe pot is better. I just don't think this guy has much. I think he has a hand like pocket sevens or ace queen almost every time. Uh, against that, how much should I bet? Uh, tough question. After timing down this long, I'm just going to go ahead and pot it and go for a little extra value because I think that he thinks that that polarizes my range. So I'm probably making a video and I'm probably talking a lot. So whatever. I think he's, he's going to hero me a little more versus size to get into the psychology of the situation a little bit. But he just folds. I think people are tight in this spot still. I know you. Okay, so good flop. Okay, so first of all, C betting on this flop. Um, the five is a, is a reasonable card for his range. I have you know fewer fives than he does. Um, that being said, I have a lot of strong aces, and my range can generally play pretty well in turn over. So this is why I just like to go for a little third pot poke. The idea is that uh, if I have a hand like ace jack. Um, I actually still want some protection if he even has a hand like jack six offsuit. I don't really want to give him free cards there. Um, so I like to just go for a little flop poke with, with most of my range uh, and then sort of split on the turn, do more range splitting on the turn. Um, after hitting the three of diamonds, that gives him a lot of turn draws and things. I think check raising is an option, but I think that, you know, especially given I have the king of diamonds, it's not the best option. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bet with what would be a pretty wide range here. I don't need to pick a huge size because I don't want to overly polarize my range in this situation because he has more fives than me in his range. So I don't need to make the pot huge. He should do that for me with his bluff raises. That was a little long-winded. So he's thinking he's going into the tank. He has the seven six of diamonds. He's thinking, he's like, am I really going to put in my 1950 right now on a bluff? Couldn't pull the trigger. All right, so now, now we've got the jack spades. Um, I would say this is a pretty easy bet call. Um, I don't expect a ton of nines to bet for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a... Um, I'm just going to bet this much. Fairly large bet and call a shove. Uh, I just am going to fold this 10 3. I'm, you know, you see these high stakes hand histories and you think everyone's opening every button, and some guys do, but when there's no antis in the game and the blinds are both regulars, um, I don't like to open just like any two suited cards usually. And I'll be sort of, I'll make some adjustments in that situation. With this 6-8, I'm going to go ahead and check call. This is a, I would say, average flop for me. It's not great. It's not, it's not terrible. And I'll call once, and I will fold non-spade, non-7, non-8, non-6 turns. Even a, a jack I might get fancy on. I might fold this turn, too. This club is just not my, my favorite six. This is a spot on eight, seven, four that I'm, I'm a little bit torn about in general. Um, I, think, I think check raise is the best play, but I think it's closer than some might have you believe. And I'm gonna fold. This is a fairly large bet. You can see that his stack is quite small. So I think it's time to lay it down. And, you know, I don't really love to get my hand in here on the flop. It's not, not an amazing situation. I still expect my range to be polarized enough to bet this turn, I think. I mean, I, this hand actually fits okay as a check call, check call blank rivers to pick off bluffs. But 
I'm not really check raising a bluff catch or heavy range in the flop. So if I check call the turn, my range sort of becomes a little bit more face up. It looks like I have something like a six of hearts maybe or something kind of like that. So I'm going to bet the turn and check call some rivers. Now, he snapped the turn, so I'm not quite sure exactly what he has. Obviously, shove is okay. Um, part of the analysis of this hand depends on how often I think 8x is in his range and how often he thinks 8x is in his range. But, interesting situation. I believe that I should just shove here. I'm not in love with this play, though. You know, this is not something that I'm particularly excited about. Because he's going to have a draw a lot, given my dead cards, given my 8 and 4 blockers. And he might even fold an overpair. So I don't know. It's not, not amazing. Check calling's okay, but the problem, too, is that, you know, he's just going to have... I like this board. This is a nice board for me. It's a board that I think I can really, you know, bet on. Six deuce here is a hand. I think I have enough backdoor everything that I can see bet. This queen seven, I will check and fold the turn. I'll develop a small check call check and check raising range in the turn in order to protect hands like this that have quite a bit of equity but have to check fold. Um, check raising the turn is actually fine here. But I prefer to be slightly less fancy when I'm playing with a new player pool until I have an idea of their tendencies, um, especially because they're going to expect fanciness from me. Of course, now that I say that in the video, everyone's going to play like a knit against me and I'm going to have to bluff again, so maybe I'll change my mind. Oh, so we have a table with, with, with real players on it. So I'm going to mix that in to the game. I am, you know, I'm really... T okay, so I, I mean, here I'm obviously barreling and I'm... The river is going to be all in pretty much like 110 percent of the time. Okay, so you know this is a really nice. I really like this this queen of spades. It really I, it's a really nice card to bet with. So you know, let's just find out. I said I wouldn't bluff, but I'm going to bluff because I decided to. So we're just going to do this, and when he calls, we're probably going to go all in. Sometimes that's just how it's going to work. I 3-bet this, and on this flop, a little bit interesting spot. Uh, I think betting's okay as it's checking. Hmm. I think I prefer on 9-6-4 specifically to bet, because this doesn't connect quite as well as like a 9-8-4. Like a 9-8-4, you know? I think I would check. It's sort of a cuspy, cuspy board for me. So this, this is the card we've been dreaming of, the Ten of Spades. This is like the bluff card of our dreams. So we're going to go all in. And we're going to get him to fold the king. And, you know, he's going to fold 5-7 if he somehow has it. And, you know, we're just going to win a lot. It's a beautiful thing. And up here, I'm going to check call. I'm going to check call down here. He's just really confused right now. He thinks he's like, oh, does he have ace jack? Does he have jack nine? But he doesn't have, what does he have? I have no idea. He is just, he's out to sea right now. We've put him in a tough spot. But we like this queen of spades in this position. All right, so he just went with it. So good hand him. So, you know, he realized his range was capped. And he was like, I'm just not going to ever fold. And of course, you can see that that sort of is the reason why initially I said, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. But, you know, it's only $2,000. All right. So, time to get serious. Checking the turn. Now, it's true that protection is kind of nice in this turn, but my range is not seven and deuce heavy. So I think it's a spot, and certainly my hand is is not strong enough to value bet in two streets. So I think check calling is the play. Uh, with this king five suited, I think we just want to check call the flop. 
Um, we may end up check raising later on. In fact, I will check raise this turn with my two pair because I think it's really implausible that I would. Um... So on this King River, I think we're going to, this is actually close. I, th I think we're going to go ahead and value bet here. I don't think he'll have a lot of kings that he plays this way. Here, I believe check raise is the play. Oh, he did have a king that he played that way. Let's see. What am I thinking? And then I lost this one too. I mean, not lost, but see if he just spade. He had jack 10. All right, so I don't think I was going to get much done there. So this four is kind of interesting. Um, it's generally when bottom pair pairs, it's a it's a spot where we should be a little bit careful. But ooh. but in this case, I don't think we need to be as careful. And the reason is because most four x, you know, the offsuit combos at least won't be in his button opening range. So it's not actually a great spot for him. He's going to have a lot of hands like 5x here in pocket sixes and even a weak 10x. On a river like this, I think it's a very obvious situation to bet fairly large. So we're going to do this and um, we're going to see what he does. He might hero us, he might not. Um, it's just a spot where, you know, bluffing is going to be good with our range and he's not going to have too much. So it's just a, a strong play. Human check raises us a 985, and as I said, human is. Renowned for his tight and solid play. Some would even say maybe. So I'm just going to flat call. Let's see what happens. The 7 is probably not a big part of his range, to be honest. I would expect him to check a lot with his, like, whatever hand he has. I'm guessing he has a lot of, you know. I actually don't feel good about this hand at all, just based on how I think he plays. So I'm probably going to make a lay down if he bets the turn, even though, yeah, Jack 10 and Queen 10 are possibilities. But I don't think that... He's going to have a wide bluffing region. I think that he's more likely to have a hand like pocket eights or pocket nines that he's just going for like value protection, sort of like keeping his range in the lead for, than he has like some air ball. Not to mention the fact that when I bet call the flop off, I mean, uh, this is close. 385 is like not very much, and it looks like my. Uh, I got four outs. You know, I can't fold here. Who am I kidding? I call. That was like the. the the smack, the, the call button, call. Deuce of Diamonds is not the best card. His backdoor flush draws came in. We'll be folding the river to a shove. That's the plan. All right. Jack 10. Okay, we won. Thank God. He actually bluffed. So maybe, you know what? Maybe I didn't give Human enough credit. I probably didn't. Human, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Please renew your membership to runatonce.com. Realize that Run at Once Pro Benjamin Solsky does not have a good read on you. And he played that hand well. And I would have folded an overpair in the turn. And you outplayed me, human. I think. So. Who knows? Sixes, I think I will flat. I think I'll flat sixes. I don't really see any reason to raise here. Um, it's not like I have a big jack advantage, maybe a small jack advantage. And I have a lot of just really weak hands. I don't see the point. The, I don't see the need to go playing my range crazy yet. And on the three, I believe it's a spot for a modest bet that's designed to get value and protection. Uh, and I will check back most rivers. In fact, I'll check back rivers that aren't a six. But the thing is, I mean, every hand in his range has six outs, and it doesn't just have six outs, it has bluff outs. If a big card comes and he bets big, I'm going to have trouble continuing. So I, I think it's a spot where betting is just going to be good with my range, and once he check raises me, my range will be narrowed to a lot of jacks. Um, so he can't just go ahead and check raise me with like pocket queens for value. So I think by setting the bet size there, I put him in a tough position, tactically speaking. So that's the plan. 
I'm actually going to take a very short break. I'll be right back. after this hand. Obviously we're calling the flop here and then deciding. You check calling turn. I actually think this is a spot where his range will be pretty strong when he bets. I don't think he's bluffing here that often the way a lot of people play this sport, but that can't be helped. And on this river, I think we're doing quite well. I actually think I'm going to go for a check raise here. I don't think that he has very much, given that I block a jack. And I don't think he's a lot of 10x. So I think he's actually turning like 8s into a bluff here quite often. And I'm going to go ahead and make it 160. And I was basically checking that river just to induce the bluff, not really for value. I expect to lose here to let, not lose, to chop with king queen. It's pretty much the hand, or queen jack or queen 10. But I think he was just bluffing. Okay, I'm back, and we'll jump right back to the action. Um, I wanted to review that hand against human really quickly. So as you guys may recall, it was uh, 985 rainbow, and I got check raised, and the turn was a six, bringing back door flush draw, and I got bet into for about two-thirds pot, and I called. River was the deuce of diamonds, and I went check, check. Even though I think that he's fairly tight in that spot, um, the, in, in it, I think, yeah, I mean, maybe he's not as tight as I think. I already talked about that. But when I flat the turn after bet calling the flop, my range is going to contain quite a few sevens in it and quite a few flush draw hands. So I think, and certainly quite a few two pairs. So, I mean, one of the benefits to calling that turn, given the pot odds that I was getting, even given that I think that he's not bluffing that much, is that the river is a scary bluff situation for him. Um, so he can't just bluff like crazy. So I should realize a lot of equity, even if I think that his range is quite narrow. So that's kind of why I decided to call in the end, even though I wasn't happy about it. Um, so we have a what we suspect is a weak player from Russia. Um, so I'm going to make a small bet here just because of the stack size. It's the tell. Not that it's you know it says that much, but he's one tabling and he's got... You know, not a full stack. So I just bet the flop for, you know, value more or less. And I'm going to check the turn and probably call the river. And, you know, I'm going to value bet the river now. Don't need to be too big. I'm just going to bet 130 and hope to get hero called by what I think is probably going to be ace X or queen X. Um, he also might have a hand like pocket sevens or something. I think that's a pretty pretty standard line. So we had ace four. So I mean, I ended up being forty eight percent in the flop versus that hand, but I think that I'm going to be a favorite against this check calling range. And obviously, given the way the hand played out, um, though I was an equity dog, I was the playability favorite um, for sure. So I ended up sort of controlling the hand uh, and putting in a bet not bad on the flop and putting in a bet good in the river and checking back the turn where I was doing less well. Uh, raging here. Don't really have stats on yet, but it'd be nice to have. I actually don't think the seven is as great of a turn bluff card as it might look like at first. I think it's okay. Um, I do like bluffing the end here, just because my hand is so terrible. It's really at the bottom of my range. Uh, so I'm going to bet that, and you know, hope, I'm hoping that he folds a hand like pocket fours. Uh, he's just going to have some hands that are trying to show down cheaply that I think will fold to that bet. And I have plenty of hands that have, you know, that are at least top pair in that river. I think top pair is kind of the value threshold, maybe a decent mid pair. So I'd say pretty standard. I'll keep looking at the lobby. Let's see, oh, Table Ninja is directing my attention. So I'll try to steal against human. I would steal against pretty much anyone. Eight sevens, you know, not a, not a bad poker hand at all. See, I don't think this this twenty five fifty is going to run, but I'll join table starter just in case. And yeah, yeah, 
aside from human, I recognize Radificic with the panda avatar. I vaguely, vaguely recognize Oshpiel888, I think just from looking at the 1020 lobby, and I vaguely recognize Patapong, but I don't know how any of these guys play. Um, so I think this is sort of... I know OTB Red Baron quite well. Actually, it's funny. I've played a lot of hands with OTB Red Baron, but I don't um, I don't have a... I shouldn't even be saying this, but maybe he's watching. I think he is watching. I think I saw something. I think there's some some user called OTB Red Baron. So he probably is. Uh, but anyway, OTB Red Baron and everyone else. I don't have a good read on your game yet, so whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Things are going well. I think I have, I have trouble with that player. I think he's, I think he's good. But maybe he's not good, I just don't. He seems good to me. He's won a lot of money. So there's that. Hopefully we'll get some hands soon, so I don't have to ramble anymore. I got, my, I got my Table Ninja now, I got my Table Ninja 2, so I can really speed along in the hands. It's, it's really fun. Oh, so I have another, another table. I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to play this, though. I got to play mine with the gun hand, so. I'd rather play the 25-50 game, although I think this might break for sure, but we'll see. Uh, this is a spot. East 10 here is a hand that um, I prefer to check. Uh, the reason is into three players and ace 9 9. I can't just go ahead see betting every which way. On East Deuce Deuce, um, this is a spot where I think see betting is going to have a positive expectation, but I, I'll mix a few air hands to my flop checking range. And the idea is that when the flop goes check, check, I'll bluff the turn. And I don't think that he can just bet any two cards in the flop, so I think that I will actually um, do quite well there. It's a, a play that you can make against better players. Um, on the turn here, I think it's time to start betting for sure. Um, I can be going for thin value here with a variety of combos, um, all the way down to you know pocket pocket sixes. I think is definitely a value bet, maybe even fives or fours or threes. So it's a pretty good situation. Um, with Ace Ten here, when he bets half pot, I definitely have to call, especially he's in position, and so he has a lot of incentive to bluff. He's seen two people act. Um, so I'll call, and I'll check. Um, on this turn, I actually think I probably need to fold. I know it's kind of gross. Um, he's definitely going to be bluffing sometimes. Uh, on this 9 river, I expect to be chopped a lot, um, but I don't think that there's a reason to bet, because I might have queens, and I'm, I might have two diamonds. But rarely am I going to have a hand that's just a bluff. And also, I mean, he's really represent. It's a very strange check back. I don't know why he did that. I think a small bet is the right play on the river there. I guess he was thinking that, you know, maybe I have a 9, which is true, but I don't think that he needs to be that afraid of a 9, given my line. I think, you know, he has the second nuts. I guess aces, too, he's afraid of, so the, the third nuts. There's only one combo of that. There's only one, well, there's some more combos of 9s. I think queen three officer I can go ahead and lay down. And this king jack here, I'm going to fold. So these 25-50 regs I know a little bit more about. Katya I've played a lot with. You can see I have 2k hands with Katya. And Katya is a very good player. Um, Ospiel, we know from the 10-20 games. And Juka Poker is a uh, X short stacker. And maybe pretty tough. Uh, Marcus was a reg in the big games for a while and then dropped off the big games for a little bit and is back. Um, I don't know how he's playing these days. I know how he used to play. He used to be pretty tight, um, but solid. I think he's a good hand reader. I don't know what he's doing now. And this guy is a Ukrainian player. I've seen him on all the waiting lists today, and I don't know much about him either. So I think there's a lot of good hold'em regs, so I just don't know much about because they don't really play as much. I, I mean, I play mostly 50, well, mostly 50, 100 these days, so I don't see these guys as much. It's a pretty standard 3-bet for me for... For winning the pot value, for <laughs> for value, I'm ahead of his calling range slightly, but also um, I'm knocking the big blind out of the pot. Um, I have good equity against pretty much any range. It's a very playable hand. It's good, you know. It's just good, good three betting hand. That's uh, not my ideal flop, and one that I'm going to check um, 
these King, these Broadway, Broadway X flops, especially where X is like an eight, nine type card, um, are actually okay for imposition's calling range, I think. I'll three bet here against the fish in order to get it heads up and hopefully win the pot preflop. Now, uh, this is an interesting card um, with the queen jack. Um, this is pretty close for me against the way I suspect this guy's playing. I mean, the thing is, a bluff is sort of an attractive play here, but, well, let me just play the hand for a second. You know, we'll talk, we'll talk soon. 4-5 against this fishy player. Um, you can go ahead and check call the flop. And a 6 here. I'm just going to go ahead and bet for tempo for semi-bluff for winning the pot. And on this 10, obviously ace-jack and pocket 10s are the two worries, but that's pretty unlikely. Maybe weirdly play jack-9. So we have, for all intents and purposes, the nuts. Um, and we're going to go ahead and bet and call a raise. And ace deuce, I'm going to show down and hope. Uh, obviously, this four, this this turn is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and bet. Um, I don't. I think check raise is okay against a better player, but I think against a weaker player, we want to give him an opportunity to either go crazy with a ten or a nine, or to um, call with a hand like you know ace high, things like that. Oh, so he did have ace jack. But he didn't raise, so that that was that's not good. You got to raise there. He has to raise. His hand is amazing. I don't know what he's afraid of. Maybe my timing is really weird, and it's like sending setting off people's spidey senses because I'm making the video. But um, that hand's just you know it's just too good. It's just too good. Um, sure, I can have pocket tens when I take this line. I can maybe even have pocket kings once in a blue moon. But most of the hands that I have are going to be thin value bets like king jack. Um, or, you know, Queen X, obviously, like I had. So, um, yeah. Uh, on the 7 River, I'm just going to value bet and, you know, try to get value from a 9 or a 10. Um, I expect to get called fairly frequently here. Um, but he can also have a hand. Like, I think he can have anything because he's a weaker player. So he could have anything down. He could have Jack 8. He could have 8 6. He could have Pocket 7. So he could have 10 7. He could have 9 7. He could have King Jack. Um, he could have anything. Uh, when he min raises the river, um, we gotta think that he's probably has it. He probably just has. Um, well, it could be all those hands I just mentioned. Um, but I mean, he's just. <laughs> I'm not gonna fold this hand um, until you know it's just too strong a hand to fold against a weaker player until you know their exact tendencies. That's really the the point. That doesn't surprise me that he had jack eight. That's a hand that makes a lot of sense. But, you know, we're not going to fold. So uh, this has been part one of the video, which is going to be for tabling pretty big stakes, no limit hold'em. And I'm going to take a short break and come back with part two. Uh, this has been Sauce123 for runatwants.com. I'll see you guys next time.